throughout the country, 90 percent of cities, states are going to go bankrupt within the next five years and probably many of them sooner. Hi, I'm Tim Cavanaugh from Reason TV. We're here with former Los Angeles Mayor Richard Reardon. Your Honor, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa just uh, recently broke from pattern. Certainly, uh, he's a longtime union supporter and uh, teachers union member. Yet he uh, has recently been thumping the tub, saying that the teachers are in the way of reform. And uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, it's curious because I've been out there through in the articles I've had in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and others, very critical of Mayor Villaraigosa, particularly on the pensions and the future and a lot of other issues like closing the libraries and weekends and at nights. And then he comes up with this incredibly great talk blaming the unions for the, our poor education system. And I said, hallelujah, I'm gonna forget everything I didn't like about him and I think he's the greatest mayor that ever lived now. The unions do not want any accountability. They put incompetent adults ahead of children educating children so they have the tools to compete in a high-tech society in the future is the best thing not only for the children but for the country because we can't compete with other countries we don't have the young people who can do the high-tech jobs that the in, in india they can do china they can do malaysia they can do the democrats have uh shown some some pretty broad disenchantment with teachers unions and public sector unions in particular of late. Um, and, you know, that going, go, starting with Governor Brown. What does this mean when you have this broad consensus among the Republicans and the Democrats and the, the people that, the, that these organizations are really taking up too much of our money, standing in the way of reform, and yet nothing changes? I wouldn't call it a broad consensus yet because clearly if you take like Sacramento, the legislature there is still overwhelmingly controlled by the, the union. But there's been a you know, break in the ice for it, like Viragosa coming in, Obama through Arne Duncan, uh, the race to the top has come in. Uh, people think that uh, Governor Brown may come in. He had charter school that he supported in uh, Oakland. Uh, but the legislators are all there. They're elected because of the unions. They're afraid to vote against the unions. But I'm hoping that what Viragosa did could be the atomic bomb that will wake everybody up, particularly poor people, and say, my child has a right to go to college. My child has a right to upward mobility to be anything they want. I don't want this kind of education. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It's a little late in the day to be saying there is any greatness in Antonio. But, uh, <laughs> you know, let's, I guess we live in hope. A lot of folks on the left will say that the problem with L.A., with California, with the United States is that the rich are not paying their fair share in taxes. Is that, it, it, is the problem, that we, could we solve our financial problems by taxing the rich more? The answer is absolutely not. And I'm, I'm a rich guy, so I can, you know, I live extremely well. Uh, I do give well over half of my wealth to charities and particularly for anything dealing with poor children. Uh, and a lot of rich people do that. And unless we educate kids to be able to be executives, top employees and everything in high technology, those kids are going to have nowhere to go. Ten years from now, They'll be poor, they'll be out of job, and they'll probably be revolting unless we figure out some way to uh, solve the problem. You cannot solve the problem by saying, okay, we're going to redistribute, because raising taxes is a way of redistributing, redistributing the wealth. Every place in the world that's ever tried that has been a dismal failure. You look at England in the 50s, they had a brain drain where the wealthy moved, including the Beatles, moved out of the country. And by the end of the 50s, England was bankrupt. Margaret Thatcher saved them in that uh, time. And you saw Chile under Allende. I mean, God, he, within a year, he like doubled the income of the poor. And within a year, the whole country was bankrupt. In the case of L.A., what would be a smarter tax policy? What could we do in the way we collect taxes in L.A. to, to make the city more competitive? I think you asked the wrong question, is how do you make the city more competitive is the right question. And you do it by having a city with bureaucrats and the, the uh, city council, the mayor being friendly to business. 
You talk to small businesses or any business, it takes them forever to get permits to start a business in L.A. The fees and everything have gone up dramatically. Who wants to start a business in Los Angeles? Forget the amount of taxes. And this is uh, when they're not banning your business outright, as you see in all of these things, and especially in the 8th uh, District, where the, the ban on fast food, the ban on liquor stores. Oh, yeah, and, and big box uh, stores, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which are the ones that bring taxes in the big box right. stores, the sales taxes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, it's the unions don't want them because the big box stores compete with the unionized grocery stores and other things. Being a wealthy guy, I don't mind paying more taxes if they're going to do the right thing. But I don't know, if you ever heard of uh, C. North Cope, uh, Parkinson? Yes, yeah. He had a magic thing. If the total taxes go over 25%, a lot of bad things happen. The rich can, right now in this uh, internet age, rich can run their company from any place in the world. They don't have to be in California. They don't have to be in the United States. California, and particularly L.A., are unfriendly to business. And we haven't created an infrastructure. We haven't done virtually nothing for an infrastructure in the last 30 years. Um, and a lot of companies have left. They've expanded. How many Apple and uh, in Intel uh, other companies have expanded outside of uh, the United States or at least outside of California? Do you have any hope for California as a sort of test case, as this kind of Keynesian interventionist laboratory where we have everything. The Democrats are in control. The Republicans have been extinguished. The threshold for raising taxes has been lowered. The, uh, you know, every, really, every aspect of human behavior has some regulation over it. There are a million environmental regulations. There's a high-speed yeah. rail effort. So how's that all going to end up? Total collapse unless something's done. What's going to happen, not just to California, can happen more in California than others, but throughout the country, 90% of cities, states are going to go bankrupt within the next five years, and probably many of them sooner. And they won't, the, the big thing is they won't be able to sell, raise money by selling bonds. Nobody wants to lend them money. Uh, and so the federal government, if Obama wants to get reelected, he's going to face some part of this because some of it will happen before 2012. And you'll have total disarray. The parks will be closed. The libraries will be closed. They'll cut down 25% or more on the number of police. And it'll be a, a total collapse. The Obama administration has not focused on this. What's your assessment of Governor Schwarzenegger? He got up into Sacramento where he had all these great ideas and you had a legislature that was controlled by the unions. So if you wanted to do things on education, the unions stopped you. And, uh, and then he had to make some peace with the unions, and then the Republicans would stop him. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I shouldn't say I feel sorry for him, but because uh, I don't think he feels sorry for himself. The L.A.'s political class, and it's, all, and it's almost entirely Democratic at this point, is really... I mean, it's a South of the Mason-Dixon line level of politics in a way that I think would shock Americans <laughs> in other places. Is there any hope for, for uh, you know, just L.A.'s political class and maybe specifically for the Republicans? Well, you, you know, you would think so that because usually, uh, you know, the Republicans go towards the middle, the Democrats go towards the middle, and uh, you get a pretty balanced type legislature, but it hasn't happened. It's gotten worse as you point out. And where it's going to be, I don't know. But if there's disaster in the city, uh, is, are the politicians going to change? Or are the public going to realize we have to elect different people? I hope it's the latter. <laughs> <laughs>